Every year it is my honor and privilege to, uh, to, to bestow the Ingalls Award on somebody and tonight is no different. But before we do, I want you to think back 160 years. The sin of slavery is destroying our country. Brother will fight brother. Hundreds of thousands will die and yet slavery will be ended. The opening shots of that war were, fought, were fired right here in Kansas in the form of Bleeding Kansas. We all heard about, you know, Quantrill burning Lawrence, John Brown. This is all part of our state legacy. But a part of our legacy that is less well known, though, is Senator John J. Ingalls. Um, it's a bit of cultural amnesia, but it's one of the reasons we inaugurated this award was to recognize him. John Ingalls came to the frontier of what was then the Kansas Territory as an ardent free stater, wanting to make sure that Kansas entered the Union as a free state. He was one of Kansas' founding fathers authored our state constitution, was a noted author, U.S. Senator, and is represented in the National Statuary uh, Hall collection in the U.S. Capitol as well. Ingalls' philosophy and why we named this award in his honor is best summed up in the following quote. I belong to the school of politicians who think government should interfere as little as possible in the affairs of its citizens. I have no sympathy for the paternal idea. All legislation can do is give men an equal chance in the race of life. That's a creed that served him well, and it's a creed uh, that KPI tries to embody as well. We have several of the winners, uh, recipients of this award with us here this evening. Um, so if you can join me in recognizing Pastor Wade Moore, Bob Weeks, John Todd, and Captain John Deloya as previous recipients. Now think back with me again, if you will, 45 years. Conservatism is represented by a man who would engage in price controls, establish the EPA, and ultimately be run from office uh, for corruption. Now think back 20 years, and this time think to Kansas again. We've had bad governors, worse policies, and Kansas is lagging the economic boom that the rest of the country would see in the 90s. And where Ingalls stepped into the breach in the 19th century, Tonight's recipient, George Pearson, stepped into that breach here in Kansas and around the country at the end of the 20th. Now, nearly everybody in this room knows George, right? Which begs the question, why give an unsung hero award to KPI's chairman? And the answer, frankly, is uh, I inaugurated the award and I'm gonna give it to whomever I bloody well choose. <laughs> but aside from that, Anybody who has had any depth of uh, relationship with George knows that he is the last person to claim responsibility for anything. But the simple truth is that the 20th anniversary celebration that we're here gathering uh, for tonight would not be possible without George's work. And even many of George's friends here locally have no idea of the work that he's done internationally and around the country in the cause of liberty. George came to Wichita in the 1960s on something of a lark uh, with his economics professor from college at Grove City, Hans Stenholz, and frankly, he never really left. While Nixon was busy ruining the name of conservatism, George was founding, uh, helping to found the Cato Institute, serving with the Institute for Humane Studies, raising money for the uh, sometimes esoteric, maybe in the form of Rampart College, uh, out in the Colorado foothills. George started a 27-year uh, career with Coke on a factory floor right here in downtown. And he ultimately became one of the driving forces for the work that Coke did then and the, woke, the work that they continue today. But his work didn't stop there. He continued in his retirement, founding Kansas, what would become Kansas Policy Institute, rather, with Garrett Wormout and Martin Eby in 1996. He still serves as KPI's chairman. He's on the board of the Atlas Network and is working to publish some of Garrett's papers. But more importantly than the organizations George founded or the academics he helped support is the impact that he continues to have on each and every person in this room and so many others. To know George is to know his lovely wife Marilyn, his two children, and a brood of grandchildren that grew just this week, I believe. And many of us in this room can point to a specific experience where George took us under his wing gave us a bit of wisdom, maybe a kick in the backside, whatever it took to not back down when we had the opportunity to do so. He remains a mentor to so many and is a personal mentor to me in the six years that I've been here in Wichita. 
were indebted for his counsel and his friendship. Now, President Obama is famous for saying and reminding us that you didn't build that. And he's correct in the sense that nobody does anything by themselves. But the difference, though, is President Obama's uh, solution to that is more government, when what we really need is more men like George, men of virtue, men of integrity, and men of honor, men who empower others to succeed, taking none of the credit, but trusting in the power of the individual to succeed when given the freedom to do so. And we're going to hear from a few other people who've shared that experience with George as well. George Pearson. What does one say about a good friend of more than half a century? Someone you know to be a trooper for liberty and for all the right causes? Well, you start by saying a big thanks, which I say to you, George, on this occasion of KPI's anniversary. If the guys on either side of me, depicted here at FEE headquarters behind me, were around today, they would say, George Pearson, a great job you've done. Thank you, George, for all that you do, all that you've done, and all that you will do in the years to come on behalf of the great cause of liberty. George, what a phenomenal thing you started 20 years ago for the state of Kansas and for all the people that live here. You're one of those unique people who just seem to add value wherever you happen to be, whether it's with the Kansas Policy Institute, whether it's with your family, whether it's with business, you just are a unique sort of a guy. You know, he's truly a man for all seasons, a dedicated man. I want to congratulate George Pearson for his long career in defense of the free society. His passion for freedom, I think, came from his classes at Grove City College, where he had a professor, Dr. Hans Senkels, a disciple of Ludwig von Mises. We want to thank you for your years of hard work and service, really leading Kansas Policy Institute to greatness. Garrett, my late husband, introduced me to George. George is as good a friend today as he's helping publish Garrett's works as he was 20 years ago. It's a great pleasure to congratulate you on 20 years of Kansas Policy Institute. You've been a pillar for us here in Wichita. You've been able to get uh, a lot of different uh, speakers and, and people to come in here and broaden our horizons. Policy comes before politics, but people come before policy. Thanks, George, I appreciate the quote. He works quietly and modestly and with extreme dedication to achieve the goals of liberty and to improve the movement itself. Thank you for all you've done, George. George, it's been great knowing you all those years. It'll be great to continue working with you in the future. Congratulations. I worked at the Kansas Policy Institute a few years back, and I will always remember the times that I spent drinking a bottle of wine and talking about free society with George. Thank you for those memories, George. George, it was great to work with you. I learned an awful lot from you, both Kansas and the conservative movement, and proud of what you've accomplished. Thank you, and Godspeed. I was a small businessman, frustrated with government inefficiencies and all the intrusions into my life. He was willing to invest much of his time and energy educating me on ways to channel that frustration and understand how to be part of the solution rather than just be frustrated by the problem. Thank you for all you do for all of us. You are truly one of the good guys. Go get them. George Pearson is a remarkable libertarian and not solely because he's a world-class beer drinker. He is somebody who was one of the original founders of the Cato Institute. He has been um, a solid, responsible proponent of principled libertarianism for 50 years, and is someone who I consider a very close personal friend. Well, I think of George Pearson as one of the unsung heroes of the freedom movement and I want to say thanks to everyone at KPI for making sure that George's praises are, are actually sung. Uh, all of us want to grow up and be George Pearson uh, one day. George has been a tireless advocate in this state and on the national stage uh, for choice and competition in both the private and public sectors. In my early years, Dad taught me life wasn't fair. He taught me how to work hard and he armed me with great literature and an entrepreneurial mind. He told me I would get $10 for mowing the yard, which seemed like a great deal, 
I would mow, he would trim the hedges, and then he would trim my pay to about six or eight dollars, claiming I only mowed a portion of the yard as the grass that the mower tires pushed down between the rows was not cut to the customer's satisfaction. Pretty soon it was clear if I was going to make the full ten dollars I needed to actually do a good job as well. Dad, I wish I could have been there tonight to celebrate the 20 years of work you've done on building this think tank for the state of Kansas. Thanks for educating me on economics, freedom, and self-responsibility, and for promoting these ideas and values to me and others throughout your life. While you tend to downplay KPI and your work in this area as a mere hobby, I know better. It's your passion, it's important work, and it will be part of a legacy that all of us would be proud of. I hope I can do for my children what you've done for me. George and I have been together 47 years. We've had a full and exciting life and two wonderful children. He loves poetry. He recites poetry, he reads poetry, and he writes poems as well. One thing George just hates to do is shop. So he would always have trouble finding a gift for me. And I would get many little jingles written to me. George and I have always shared the same thoughts, deep values and beliefs in tradition, integrity, and in being principled, self-responsible in life, and above all, we cherish our freedom in America. The first date I had with George, we, he talked a lot about things that made so much sense to me, but I had never really uh, been around somebody that uh, expressed it that way. Yeah, you know, I think he's going to feel like his most wonderful accomplishment at this point is where he has taken KPI. We were originally just a bunch of true believers and George got the thing organized and he continued to organize it. He continued to recruit the crowd that's here tonight. It's been a, a long, hard struggle and George never wavered. He has brought us to where we are today. George, thank you very much for all that you have done and continue to do for Kansas Policy Institute and the people of Kansas. Hooray for George! Hooray at last! Hooray at George! He's first class. Love you, George. So I am um, Shelly Fernandez, and George is my dad. And I first want to just start off saying ditto to everything. That was amazing. But um, there's no one I admire more than my dad. And there's many reasons. But as I've grown older, I have definitely really recognized his strong sense of values. And now that I have three kids of my own, I realize that it's really hard to, to stand up for your values all the time, no matter what the external factors or outside influences are. So because of that, I'm not surprised by his amazing contribution to KPI. But I have a, I have a short story to tell. And I was probably around four or five years old, about the same age as my daughter, Sydney. And I asked my dad if I could get my ears pierced. Well, I asked my parents if I could get my ears pierced. And the answer was not until you're an adult. So when I was young, I thought you were either a kid or an adult. I didn't think like you could all transfer into an adult. It just seemed like forever. So the other day I actually asked my daughter, Sydney, who's four, how old do you think an adult is? And she said, a hundred years old. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't like that answer. Um, I think I felt the same way as she did. But um, regardless, I just, um, I came back over and over. And when I was, I remember being 11 years old, I asked again, can I get my ears pierced? And the answer was, let's have a conversation about it. So just like my brother and I, whenever we wanted something, my parents were always like, let's have a conversation. So the conversation was, if I could show some of the responsibility level of, a, of, a, of an adult, then they would consider letting me get my ears pierced. So it was decided that if I could cook dinner for three nights a week for three months while my mom taught flute lessons, they would, they would think about letting me get my ears pierced. So I eagerly accepted, and I learned how to cook all kinds of recipes. I cooked chicken fried rice and spaghetti and tacos, and what's ironic is I don't think my dad's cooked any of those meals, <laughs> probably ever, <laughs> but that's beside the point. Um, 
So when I think about being 11 and gaining this self or gaining this responsibility and building self-confidence and doing something that I earned and I felt proud of, it makes me think a lot of dad's belief in this whole fight for freedom. So with that, um, I am proud and honored to help give my father, George, the um, Angles Award tonight. Come on up, George. Thank you very much. I thought last year was over the top with that happy birthday chorus. <laughs> James, I thought we had an agreement. And the agreement was no more surprises. Uh, I'm not sure what to say. D James told me that after his introduction, that uh, whatever was left, whatever time was left of the four minutes that was allotted to this part of the program, whatever time was left I'd have. Well, so I'm done because we've gone eight or ten minutes. I, I'm, I'm out of here. So, but, but I would like to say something. Unlike the other speakers who are so eloquent, they can come off the top of their head. Since I knew I only would have about a minute or a minute and a half, and I was wrong about that, uh, I'll just read something that uh, kind of comes from the heart. I'm deeply honored to receive the John Engels Award. I believe if you associate with good people and pursue a cause long enough, something good will happen. I would like to acknowledge the other founders of KPI, which James has already mentioned, Garrett Wormout, who is no longer with us, and Martin Eby, who is here tonight. Martin has supported and served in many different ways, KPI, for 20 years. It's my good fortune to work with pe good people Dave and his team are terrific, and so are the Tom Palmers and Larry Reeds in the movement. As James mentioned, I've been involved with organizations promoting freedom for over 50 years. The last half of that time has been with policy in the policy arena. Why policy? In the political process, ideas are the input and votes are the outcome. For better or worse, policy shapes the political outcomes. Simply put, good policies produce good outcomes and bad policies produce bad outcomes. As many of you have heard me say, I believe that we are overinvested in political outcomes and underinvested in getting good policy into the political process. Thank you for this award and thank you all for being part of the effort. So now um, we would typically hear from KPI's president, Dave Traubert, and for those of you who are uh, following along in your programs, you'll note that uh, we should be, but I am not him. Um, I'd like to read a bit of a letter from him, uh, kind of explaining his absence this evening. Friends, thank you so much for being here tonight and for giving us the honor of representing you in the fight for liberty. The KPI staff has done an incredible job preparing this celebration of our 20th anniversary. They are simply the best and have my enduring gratitude. I also want to thank KPI's trustees for giving me the privilege of serving as president these last eight years and especially thank our chairman, George Pearson. He's my friend and mentor and, a, and most deserving of the Spirit of Freedom Award. I wish I could be with you here, there to celebrate, but my wife is very ill and she's my number one priority. In my place, we're delighted to have two great champions of liberty, Tom Palmer and Larry Reed. Now, normally a program change means the audience is getting the understudy, but in this case, the understudy is giving way to the stars of our movement. Enjoy your evening. And it's hope that we're sending to Dave and Marie this evening, wishing that they were here to celebrate these 20 years of accomplishment um, and missing them greatly. But it's the hope of a different sort that actually brings us together here as well. 
the hope that our, the blessings of our nation will not be lost for future generations, a hope that your children, that my children, can flourish in the years to come, a hope that Kansas and America's best days are in fact in front of us, and this is the hope that binds us all together. Yes, to acknowledge the work that we've done over these past two decades, but also to acknowledge the work yet to be undertaken. From the tenor of our presidential politics to the constant stream of bad news in Kansas, it's easy to lose hope. But we cannot lose hope. We must not lose hope. For those of you who are here uh, today, we talked a lot about that idea of hope and believing that our best days are in front of us. We understand the worries that are before our state, and we understand what we're up against. Sometimes it seems like media and government are actually colluding against us, reaching deeper and deeper into our pockets and taking more and more of our freedom. And this is what we're up against on the screens. The left is well organized. School districts, counties, cities, community groups, everybody looking and thinking that you don't know how to best run your life. In fact, we have Governors Carlin, Hayden, Graves, and Sibelius looking back on nostalgia and trying to save Kansas back to the time when they were in power. And we could do that, I suppose, but it entails some of the highest tax burdens in the region, constant school funding lawsuits that go nearly all the way back to the days of Reagan. But fortunately, KPI can learn from the other 61 think tanks operating in the states around the country, working in our own ways to advance freedom and in their own way. Now imagine, if you will, for a moment, the idea that we can keep the Wichita Eagle honest on a daily basis. <laughs> Empower people in your local communities to stand up for themselves and to stand up for their freedoms. Putting children's needs ahead of the adults working in our schools. And this is what we're trying to build. This represents the hope for a brighter future, future for my two sons. Represents a brighter future for each of your children and grandchildren. It builds on the successes of the last 20 years while investing in the fight for the next 20. A similar infrastructure to this is what allowed Governor Scott Walker in, in uh, the state of Wisconsin to become famous. It helped the home of the United Auto Workers in Michigan to pass right to work legislation. And it's similar to the infrastructure that has worked to advance the cause of freedom around the world. Now it's my pleasure to welcome Tom Palmer of the Atlas Network this evening who has spread the ideas of freedom in places like China, behind the Iron Curtain when it still stood, and various other unsavory places around the, around the world. And another unsavory place um, is Michigan. And we're also pleased uh, to have Larry Reed, uh, who is the president of the Foundation for Economic Education and was previously the president of the think tank there. And they're going to tell us a little bit more about their work and what this infrastructure has meant for them. Please join me in welcoming Tom Palmer and Larry Reed to the stage. Thank you, James. It's a pleasure to be here in Kansas and with the KPI. Uh, focusing on uh, George, I've known George for a long, long time, so we figured about 40 years, and worked with him and learned from him and his patience and decency and the way that he works with people, which is so admirable. He's also on the board of the organization where I spend most of my time, the Atlas Network, and what we do is to work with groups like KPI all around the country and all around the world, 457 partners, 97 countries, 94 of those partners are in the U.S., helping them to reach higher levels of effectiveness with our message of limited government, personal responsibility, and individual liberty. Uh, most of my work is done abroad. I'm the vice president for international programs, so I'm most of the year outside of the country and one thing I have found why our commitment in this country is so important is friends of liberty all over the world look to the United States. When we live here, we see all the faults and all the problems. That's, that's normal. That's what we want to fix. But other people look to our country and they see the virtues. A friend of mine, a Russian friend who struggled for many years under the Soviet Union uh, for liberty, directed me a while ago to Ronald Reagan's 1961 speech, which you can find on YouTube. It's quite powerful. And he concluded, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We don't pass on the ideas of liberty in the genome. Uh, they don't get passed on that way. They have to be taught and handed down from one generation to the next. I'm by nature an optimist, but I do see very dark clouds on the horizon, and I'm quite worried about liberty. 
Uh, I won't become a pessimist, though. Pessimist, pessimism is self-fulfilling. If you're pessimistic, you'll probably turn out to be right. Only optimists win. So we have an obligation to be optimistic, but it means that we need to earn the optimism by working harder, by working smarter, by finding out what mistakes we've made and correcting them. And the message I want to share from our friends all over the planet, in China, in Russia, in Brazil, in Iran, everywhere, is they say, please do not let freedom die in America. Do not let it die in the heartland, because if the f light of liberty is extinguished in Kansas, it will surely go out in America. And if it goes out in America, it will go dark over the entire planet. Thank you very much, and thank you, George, and your colleagues for keeping the flame of liberty burning right here in America's heartland. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, James. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you know, but uh, perhaps most of you don't, that George and I grew up not far from each other in uh, western Pennsylvania, in Chippewa Township, just outside of the bustling metropolis known as Beaver Falls. <laughs> George uh, lived l literally about a half a mile from me, and uh, I know he loves to tell the story of the first time we met and that's when he was probably 16 or 17 and I was 10 years his junior and he was playing football with some uh, friends of his age and I apparently showed up and insisted on joining in and George said, I think your mother's calling you. And <laughs> we didn't speak for the next 20 years. <laughs> but uh, George, you are a hero in so many ways and I'm so Proud to know you and, and extend congratulations on the part of all of us at FEE uh, for your award tonight. The Foundation for Economic Education, uh, which George has not only known of, but in various ways been supportive of and involved with for many years, uh, goes back uh, 70 years. We're 70 years old this year. Uh, and it's only in recent years that we have recommitted ourselves to the principles we've always stood for, but with a new focus. Uh, in terms of audience. Our focus is on young people, high school and college students in particular. And even among that demographic, we're looking at impacting newcomers in that age group to ideas of liberty. So everything we do from the seminars to the website to uh, presentations uh, on uh, college and high school campuses is aimed at attracting students who have not heard of these ideas before. And you know you're making a difference when the most common reaction on the evaluations after a fee event from the students uh, is some version of, I never heard this before, or why didn't I hear this before? And I know that uh, uh, KPI produces that kind of response too, but not just among students, even legislators. <laughs> so uh, uh, they certainly share that uh, important value uh, with fee, educating for liberty. The only other one thing I want to say is um, uh, I looked around the audience earlier and I thought, you know, what a fine group of people who uh, have a variety of interests and occupations. But the one thing that brings all of us together tonight uh, is, of course, KPI. And the one thing that KPI is most identified with, that is animated by, uh, and on behalf of, is liberty. And so I want to close with one of my favorite uh, quotes about liberty. If you saw the movie Braveheart a few years back, starring Mel Gibson, you'll recall that that was about the great Scottish freedom fighter William Wallace. The movie ended with his execution in 1305 at the hands of the tyrant Edward I. But I always wished that the movie had a sequel to it. Uh, and if it did, it would tell you what happened in Scotland in the succeeding 15 years. The Scots continued to fight for uh, their liberties against uh, Edward I and later his son Edward II. And in 1320, 456 years before the Declaration of Independence, they issued a document called the Declaration of Arbroath. It was the first document in human history 
that asserted that it was the duty of the sovereign to rule by the consent of the governed, and furthermore, the duty of the governed to get rid of him if he didn't. And they ended the document with this appeal on behalf of the values they shared. They said, quote, it is not for honor or for glory or for wealth that we fight, but for freedom alone, which no good man gives up except with his life. Thank you.